Glasses on, off? Uh, I think they look cool. Okay, Keep perfect. them on. Keep them on, yeah. <laughs> You're the Brandon man. Come on, yeah, brother. Exactly. So right off the bat, I'm going to throw some numbers at you. 217 wins, 44 losses, zero losing seasons, and 18 bowl appearances over a 20-year span for Boise State's historic football program. And while those numbers are great, perhaps their most recognizable number is 100,000 square feet, because that is the amount of turf that it takes to create their legendary football field. And today, with the help of a few experts, we're going to get a behind the scenes look at how the magic is made. I'm Leland with Korski, and welcome to Sports Dissected. So I'm here with my man Cody, the yes. uh, Senior Assistant Athletic yep. Director of Operations. Did yep, I get that right? It. You got it. Explain to me what that title, what that title entails. And like, what, what do you do with your, your yep. position? We oversee facilities, um, take care of each of our sports athletic facilities, the fields, okay. the buildings, um, anything that relates to that. You said you're, you're over the fields. Obviously, we're here at, at Boise State, the, the beautiful blue turf. Kind of explain to me what that process was like. So usually we try to replace the field every uh, eight to 10 years, somewhere in that time okay. frame. That's kind of the lifespan um, for the field turf here. For that process, it takes about four weeks to actually pull the old out, put the new down. The field turf guys do an awesome job. Okay. They have an amazing crew that comes in and just knocks it out in no time. We're looking at two different pieces of, of the turf and uh i'm assuming obviously this is a, this is the older one yep. right explain like the the look and, and the look and feel and difference mm -hmm. of it this is the old one um, the fibers are are shredded apart a lot more this is almost 10 years old it's nice and faded and you can see each of these fibers once it's groomed and uh wears a little more they will all separate out okay more like this okay where it's a a fuller look how did they how did they put this down so everything's sewn in. Mm -hmm. um, the process for replacing the field, they'll run some equipment over it that actually pulls out as much of the infill material as they can. They'll bag it up, put it off to the side. Once they can get all that cleared out, they'll start to pull five yard sections one at a time. So they'll cut the seam basically right on the yard line and, and the other yard line here and they'll take a tractor and they pull it and create an entire roll going the length of the field. Stick those off to the side and they can only go in uh, three or four sections at a time because okay. of the brock layer underneath. It can only be exposed to UV light for a certain amount of time before it starts to deteriorate. Uh -huh. And then after that, everything gets sewn together and then they put the infill in. Kind of an interesting thing that a lot of people don't realize is when they lay the field, it doesn't come with hashes and numbers and letters already installed into it. Okay. They have to come through cut out those sections and sew in each of those individually. What about the actual color of the turf, the, the orange and blue? How do they get that uh, that color? It's all just a synthetic material made at the factory. Okay. Um, we just kind of give them the Pantones that we're working with and, mm -hmm. and they get those as close as possible to kind of what we're asking for. And it's the same with any other color. You see the blue, the orange, the white, mm -hmm. yellow, red, whatever else that you see in end zones at other fields, it's mm -hmm. just made at the factory. Going on 30 years that we've had the uh, the blue turf, um, you know, and it was first originally put in by our athletic director named Gene Blameyer. Okay. And basically, Gene was a fairly young athletic director, pretty good visionary, and said, if we're going to spend the money that it takes to put in an artificial surface, why don't we do something that gains some notoriety? Mm -hmm. And who's, you know, it's not grass, so why does it have to be played on green? You know, mm -hmm. just because it has to match grass doesn't mean you have to do it. And so he went with a blue turf. And it was fairly uh, under wraps until you know we launched it you know prior to the '86 season and, okay. and uh, debuted it. And we've seen over the last several decades that it has become one of the most recognizable you know sports things in in the country, which is pretty cool to see. So. So 
take us back to that. Take us back to that initial game. Yeah, Humboldt State. Uh, there we go. So tell yeah. us, tell us a story from there. Well, I think the first game, obviously, it was one of those that there, it was local television. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a, an NBC affiliate here that did the game. So you had it kind of throughout the valley. Uh, Boise, Idaho was a lot less population than it is now. There's been big growth that way. So it was kind of a, a, a college town team at that point. But to play on blue turf, uh, every single player that played in that game, that was a huge, huge thing for them and, and something that they'll never forget. And uh, the game was pretty much all Boise State, 74 to nothing. So wow. you can you can always uh, look back in the record book and one of the most lopsided games in the history of this program happened in the very first game on, on the blue. So, so you've seen the rise in the popularity of the blue turf uh, really take off and, and it's something that in Boise, Idaho for these Boise State players, uh, there is no way we would want to play on anything but blue. Okay, so it's in you. It's, it's in you. Blue. This, this like defines what we are. We talk about bleed blue, but we also talk about blue collar being our approach okay. and just outworking everybody, you know, having a commitment to excellence and doing it, doing the work every day and doing it at a high level. Uh, that's really what we define ourselves by. And the, the blue turf uh, inside of Albertson Stadium is just literally a constant everyday reminder about um, doing that kind of work and, and really being blue collar. You know, once you're actually a part of it, then you realize how important it is to Bronco Nation. Our okay. fans really gravitate towards that. That's our identity. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, everything that we do is, is we try to bleed blue. Okay. And making sure that we put the blue turf in the, in the best light. Okay. And front and center for our fans helps our fans kind of gravitate towards our brand. Was there any pressure once you got here and realized how serious people were about the blue? Absolutely. I okay. think that's one of the things that you need to be conscious of and what this means to Bronco Nation. Mm -hmm. The blue turf is something that is sacred. It's something okay. that we want to provide as a uh, talking point between the athletics and, and our fan base and mm -hmm. our donors. And uh, you've seen that lately. We want people to connect to Boise State Athletics. And I think one of those opportunities to do is just letting fans be out here. Mm -hmm. So letting them come out on the blue, experience for it for themselves, and, uh, and create that connection with Boise State Athletics that, that can be beneficial for both. Okay. When I was doing a little research just on the school and I just typed in blue turf. Yeah. You guys were the only ones who uh, came up. Why, why was that? Is that? Was that by design? We have a trademark. We have a trademark for non-green artificial turf. So, so that's all colors? All colors. Okay. But blue is the one that we are we protect the most. So from our perspective, we want to make sure that uh, that brand, that identifying blue turf mm -hmm. sticks with Boise State. No one else uh, has the opportunity to utilize that. Mm -hmm. And that's something that uh, is really important to us and kind of a cornerstone of our athletics department. Well, Matt, I appreciate all your, uh, your insight. Absolutely. And uh, I look forward to watching you guys again this season, man. It's gonna be, a, gonna be exciting. I have a new, new polo and also a new team. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate you coming here. We love the blue and we love the fact that you guys were able to come here and, uh, and share, share it with everyone. It's been a pleasure. All right, thanks. All right. Today, Boise State was dissected. Think about it. One idea changed the program forever. Sorry, you'll never see it the same. Make sure to follow Koiski Media on both Instagram and Twitter for more details on how to win this Boise State care package. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button below and check out our other video series like Royal Key with George Keel or Saturdays with Des Moore. All right, time to go get caught up. Peace. Also, you might have missed our part one and part two videos featuring Colorado Springs sneaker collector Jacob Bailey's amazing shoe rooms. Well, get ready because we're going to drop another bomb when we feature him again. Only this time, he'll be showcasing something you've never seen before. But for now, make sure you check out part one and part two videos below in the description and stay tuned.